In this video, I will be going over the wall framing connections for a room addition. And those connections can usually be made a few different ways. And one of those connections will be to the side of an existing wall. And you might have a corner framed like this, or it might be reversed to where this framing plate here comes through and this one here stops over here to where these studs are now rotated at a 90 degree angle. And then this stud right here would be over here. And of course we would do the same at the top. And in some cases you're gonna be dealing with a situation where the rafters come down in this direction. And in another case, they might be coming down in this direction here. And of course the rafter tails might need to be cut off to make a top plate connection. And even though we're using a subfloor framing method here, the same method should apply to a concrete slab also. And I will be making two other videos on floor framing and roof framing connections. And I wanted to give you an example here of a channel to where we have a channel in the wall here. And then this wall here attaches to that channel because you're basically going to be doing the same thing on the other side of the wall provide you with a view at the top on both sides. Now let's go ahead and go to the very top to provide you with an example of a connection where we have the top plate running through and connecting to the other wall's bottom framing plate. And most of the time the connection here will be made with two, three, or four 16D nails. Next up, let's go ahead and add our walls. And if your home addition wall is going to connect something like this, where it's going to be perpendicular to the existing wall, then we can go ahead and run through this scenario here to where you will need to build a channel. And a channel is usually going to have a two by four on one side, a flat two by four on the other side, and then another two by four on the other side. However, you could always just use four framing studs and nail them together also. And hopefully that makes sense. If not, I think you'll get a pretty good idea how we can toenail the new framing studs to the existing framing plate if we're going to be using it. And then rotate this one 90 degrees. And we could always toenail this into the new wall framing plate on the other side here. Or toenail it from the opposite side into this framing plate here. And then we're going to add this framing stud also. And that can be toenailed since we're not going to be able to in-nail it from the bottom of the wall framing plate like we might if we were framing a wall on the ground and then raising it into position. Next up, let's take a look at the other side of the channel. And you can always toenail the framing studs that you're adding to the existing top plate. And hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me know in the comment area and I can make another video dedicated to making a channel. Then we can go ahead and add this wall framing stud and then zoom in on one type of connection. And that might be to use a flat piece of building hardware like this. Or you might be able to grab a strap and bend it in half to create a stronger connection. And this method right here will require adding another filler block in here. Or if we framed this with four studs, a stud here, a stud here, a stud here, and a stud here, we could simply move the strap over and nail it to one of the studs. And don't forget, you could always move this over if it was going to be in the way of your roof framing or other parts of the home addition framing also. And one of the most common methods to attach this stud to the channel will be to use 16D nails. And I will let you choose how many of those you want to put into it. Just don't forget that the electrician and the plumber might need to get through these walls. So don't get too carried away with your nails. And of course, we could always use different types of framing hardware to connect the wall studs together. And you could always put those framing anchors on both sides. And don't forget to fill all of the nail holes in case you're wondering why I left those out. You will see that here in a few seconds when I get to the connection on the other side. And of course we could always cut these framing plates and run this top plate past to nail it to the lower wall framing plate here. That would be a nice connection. And another thing I want to point out is that sometimes the nailing requirements by your local building authorities 
might require more nails on each side of the brake. And that's a common practice in California where we usually need 12 16D nails on both sides of the brake, especially in this example here. And I do have more information on that at our website. Just wanted to provide you with an example of that. And even though I have the nail sticking up, your nails will need to be driven down and even with the top to make a better connection. Next up, let's go to the other side here and provide you with a different way to attach a corner here. And you might be able to use this method here on the other side also. Now, some building codes require a long strap, and this might be more common in California where we're dealing with earthquakes, where you might need to install a four foot long strap. And yes, this is one heavy duty connection. I don't really know why we need them, but I'm not an engineer. And since I'm not an engineer, won't be able to comment on that further. And of course we have our nails again to attach our new wall framing stud to the existing walls. And again, you can use as many as you want. I normally, Use two about here, two about the middle, and two about here to attach this stud to the channel or the corner. And if you can use a smaller strap, then you might be able to use something like this where you're nailing the upper section of the strap to the upper framing plate and the lower section of the strap to the lower framing plate. Or you can reposition it like this or reposition it like this if that will work for you. Another thing you can do will be to add a couple of blocks and then maybe use a longer strap if you're looking for a better connection. And again, you could put as many of these as you want in your wall framing. And of course, you could add one at the bottom here for the building foundation, even though this might not be necessary. Next up, let's head back over to here where I change things up. And since this isn't about roof framing, I removed the trusses here so that I could focus on the wall framing connection. Let's just say that we're going to have a corner here and we want to create a stronger connection. We could always slide a strap underneath one of the roof framing members like the truss. However, I don't think it's going to be necessary since we have a continuous bottom framing plate that we're going to be connecting the new wall to. And again, even though I have it like this, you could always use one of the previous connections that I showed you if that's going to work better for you. So again, we have a continuous bottom plate. If this had a break, let's just say that we had a splice right here and it was less than four feet away from this wall, then we might need to add a strap. And I'm not suggesting you will need to add a strap. In some places, it's only two feet away from the end. So you would need to check with your local building authorities and engineers to verify that. And if for some reason you needed a longer strap, let's just say you had a break over here that needed to be strapped, you might be able to do something like this. And that will require you to remove a little bit of the framing plate here so that you could slide the strap through and again, the nailing for the top plate should look something like this. And if you needed the strap to be up here and you had to cut a gap between here, just don't forget that now you're going to need another strap or way to connect this wall to this wall. By lowering it to the lower top framing plate, I can do this without affecting the connection between this wall and this wall here. And of course, on the other side, we might end up with the same problem. If I had a break less than four feet away or two feet away, depending upon what your local building codes suggest, then I might be required to add a strap in that area to provide us with a nice solid wall framing plate connection that isn't going to separate during any seismic movement or hurricane force winds. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment area. And if there's some type of a detail connection that I missed in this video for wall framing, let me know in the comment area so that I can add another video to this one. And if I do need to add more videos, I will put it in the first comment. I will put a link to that video or more videos in that box.